let's try to understand the array filter method. So filter method is used to filter the given array and applying some conditions on top of that and the elements who fulfill the certain condition, a new array will be created for all those elements. Let's see with a quick example here. So I am creating a simple array here which is holding integer numbers like this. Okay. And now I want to apply a filter function here which will get all the even numbers out of this particular array. It means there are five elements in my array, but I want to only get the even numbers out of it. It means I need to check each and every element, it is an even number or not. So I need to travel through each and every element over here. I can do this by using a normal for loop statement, but we can also use a filter statement directly. So firstly, let me just try with a for statement here array dot for each and here for each and every element for each and every element what I can say I can say like if I need to start the function here if the element modulus 2 is equals to equals to 0 so it means it's an even number and what I'll do, I'll create an array here. For example, even numbers. And initially, I'll keep this array empty. And using this particular for statement, on each and every element, I'm doing the travel scene. I'm doing an iteration. So if I found a particular element is modulus is equals to zero when I'm doing it divided by two. So it means it's an even number. And let's push it inside the even numbers array the particular element. Let's see the output. That's perfect. So we are getting two, three here. And let me just add more number here, for example, six. So I should also get now two, four, and six in my even numbers array. That's perfect. So we are iterating through each and every element out of this particular array, whichever matching condition we are pushing into another array. But now we are doing it in a bit complicated manner. We are performing a for each, then we are keeping an empty array, then we are performing a push operation. But we can simplify this by using a filter function. How? Let me just comment this. And here I can directly say, let even numbers the array dot filter the array dot filter and here i can mention the predicate function so what is the predicate function in your previous array you have written something here for each and every element some function using that function you were checking that element is equals to an even number or not so this is the predicate function so to predicate function is simply a function which is accepting your element only single element at a time and performing some certain conditional operation on that and it will return you true and false as per your conditional logic. So let me just write my predicate function. So my predicate function will accept one input as an element and it will give me true or false. So what's my condition? If this element, if I do modulus 2, if that is equals to zero, I want to get uh, the true and false out of it. So this will return me true and false. And this is what my predicate function need. Now, what this filter will do for all the elements which predicate function is saying true, it will create a new array out of it. It is not going to modify the existing array. It will create a new array out of it and put it inside number array. So now, Let's console the original array. That's perfect. So this is my original array, which is not getting modified. That's very important. And after that, this is my updated array, a new array in which I'm getting my even numbers. So this is how we can write a filter function, which is accepting one predicate function as a parameter to define the behavior of your filter. Now, we can also apply this filter on a more complicated array, something like array of objects. So let's try that. 
So I'll create array of objects okay and here and specify something called as code so let's say this is a list of employees for example that's it so we are ready with an array which is holding three objects in it or three employees and each and every object is having three properties in it so i want to apply a filter here now uh, I want all the employees for which the code is two. It means after the filter operation, I should get only two objects out of it. So out of this three, I just need this first object and this last object because both are satisfying my condition of code equal to two. I don't want the employee who is having with the code one. So let's try with an example here and for the the same we have also a quick implementation a diagrammatic representation for the same so this is our original array so in which when i'm starting my filter operation so firstly my filter operation will start with a predicate function let me also simultaneously code for the same so the predicate function is having one object as a parameter and here i need to write the condition the logic inside the predicate function. So I'm going to say if this object code is equals to equal to two, so this will return true or false. If it is returning true, then we'll put it inside our new array. And let me create here a new array called updated, and then we'll do a quick console. Now let's understand how this filter is working with this particular diagram. So firstly, you are having three elements in your array, right? Three objects. So it will visit the first one initially. The first one, which is uh, ID 101, and the name is Naveen, for which the code is 2. And here inside the predicate function, this object will come up. And if you want to experience that, you can also console here the object and experience. So here it is checking if this object code is equal to equal to 2, then I want to put it inside a new array called updated. That's perfect. So if the condition is true here in this case, so we, will, we are going to put it inside an updated array. Next, the predicate function will navigate and iterate through the second object in my original array. Again, it will compare if the code is equal to equal to 2. No, if it is not, then it will not put it into my updated array and it will start iterating to the next element. Again here, the code is compared, the code is equal to two. So your predicate function is written in a true statement in this case. So now this object will be put inside an updated array in this way. So this is how the filter works for the complicated array of objects as well. Let's see the outcome. That's very perfect, we are getting two objects. Let's also confirm all the objects are having code equal to two, yes. Yes, so we are getting all the employees which are having a code 2 here in this case. What is the thing we should note here? When we are performing a filter operation, the original elements will remain as it is. Only what we are deciding which element to be part of the next array and which element should not be part of the next array. This is what we decided by the filter function. It is not modifying the original objects present inside an array. So this is how the filter works in JavaScript. In this lecture, we'll see the filter usage with few examples. I'll create array here, which is holding few values in it. Let's apply a filter. And here, I want to remove all the falsy values in my array. I mean, if my array consists of some false values, let's say null, otherwise undefined, or maybe the empty slots as well. So in this case, if you just get the length of the array, 
it is six. So total there are six elements in my array. This is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth. This is sixth one. And now here the problem is we don't want to have the empty values, the falsy values in our array. So for that, we are going to remove that by using the filter. This will be my updated array. Array dot filter. Let's apply a predicate function here, which will have one input element and in output it will say true or the false. So what I will do here, I will say if this element is a truth value, it's a truthy value, then I will return true. And if it's a falsy value, then I return false. This is a simple if else statement which I am writing by using a conditional operator. If there is some data, we need to return true. If there is no data, we need to return false. So here when it will come with null, it will go to the false statement. When it will come with undefined, again it will go to the false statement. When it will go with the empty one, then also it will go to the false one. So we should get remove all the false values with this logic. We should be able to see here now we are getting only the positive values here or maybe which are actual values 0.23 but there is a small problem in this case if i just add zero over here let's see what happens so ideally as per we are expecting we should get all these values and these values should get removed because these are the falsy values but surprisingly if you see the outcome we'll also able to with we are removing the zero value as well which should not happen in this case so for that we need to change our logic a little bit if you compare here when you're putting zero value inside your predicate function so when you're putting zero here it is not going to the true part of the conditional operator it is going to the false part of the conditional operator because zero means false so you need to enhance this a little bit so what i can mention here either it's a element with some truthy value or your element is equals to equal to zero so i am just enhancing the condition here now we should be able to see zero will be the part of your filter outcome let's try with one more example so this is a array here which I can consider I'm getting a list of object from the backend from some third party REST API in this way. Here, I'm getting the five different object into this particular array from any backend REST API, for example, in which this data is not in my control. It is being given by the third party. And that's the reason if you are able to see the second object is not a correct one here. It's an empty object. It is not having a property called ID. The second is correct. Third is also correct. But again, the problem is with the last one. In the last one, this is a null. It should not be a null, there should be some value. So we need to apply a filter operation now on top of this array, which is given by the third party. So let's start applying that array.filter. And whatever the outcome will come out of this, we are going to store in some new array called updated. For each and every element, so for element better, I'll say object here. And what I'll say, if my object consists of id then only return true or else we should return false so what happening in this case let's check object by object for the first object will come up in this predicate function so it is having an id so that's perfect here it will go to the true part and the first object is selected now that's good Let's go to the second object and put it into your predicate function. So here, second object is empty. That is not having an ID as a property. 
So if you put it here, you will get a undefined. When you are getting undefined, so predicate function will return you false. It means the second object is not going to select with your filter logic. It will be ignored. It will select the third one. It will also select the fourth one. But again, coming on the last one, ID is null. So when this object we are passing to our predicate function, so ob.id will be null. And in that case, it will return false. So the final object is also not getting selected. Let's try to console the updated array on the console box. So we can see here only the three objects are getting selected. And this is the way you can filter out the valid data which is being given by the REST API in which there could be some falsy values or maybe there could be some inconsistencies in the data. This is how the filter works in JavaScript. Let's see what are the advanced options available with filter. So in filter, we use the predicate function. So we have used till now with predicate function only one input parameter that is the current element. Apart from that, there are two more parameters for that. Let's see how we can use that and where it will be useful with some example. I'm having a simple array in which I'm having the numbers here like this. Okay. I want to create a function now which will give me the even numbers but the condition here is that along with the even numbers i also want the first element of my array and the last element of my array in my final array compulsorily so creating just an even array with a filter is possible let's see how so i can apply a filter here I can write a predicate function for which the input is element here, the current element. And I can say element modulus 2 and here it should be equals to 0. With this condition, I am making sure that I am just selecting the even numbers. Have a look at the output now. We are having 2, 4, 6, 8, only the even numbers. But what is the additional point we need here? We also need compulsorily the first element of array and the last element of array in our final outcome when we are performing a filter. So only taking out the even number is not our complete logic. If you want to change that behavior, you need certain logic here. You need some certain logic here to identify the first and the last element. How you can do that because you just having an access to the current element so to have that if you closely look at our filter function under this predicate we are having some more options we can give as an index we can also have a complete array so here along with the current element we can also have the index so this index will indicate the elements index from our original array let me apply the curly brackets here to demonstrate the same. So this is an equivalent arrow function in which there is only one extra parameter that is index. And here we can just console index and along with that colon, I'll also console the element so that I can perfectly compare how I'm getting my index and the element. Very perfect. So this is the zeroth index first second. You can see on the zeroth index, I'm having the element one here. On the first index, I'm having the element two. So this is how it is getting continued. And on the last index called number eight, I'm having an element called number nine. Now, when I'm having access on this index, why can't I write some logic so that my return statement will return true for the first and the last element of my array. Of course, we can do that. So I'll say here, if the index is equals to equals to zero, 
then don't perform any calculation or any conditional logic for the even because we have to compulsory select the first element even if it's an odd or even. So from here, directly I'll return the true. If it's not a first number, if it's not the first element in my array, let's perform some calculation. Else if So the same logic that I'm checking for the even number, I'll put inside the else if here. And from here itself, I'll return true. So I'm satisfying both the condition now. The function is capable to return true in two cases. Either the element will be first or your element is an even number. And if it is, uh, th there is no case apart from these two, we will going to return a false statement. There is also one more condition we need to cover like the last element of an array. So we can also do that over here itself. Either it should be the first one or it should be the last. Index is equals to equals to 8. Currently, I know the length of the array. So the last index in my array is 8. That's the reason I'm hard coding the number 8 here. Let's see the outcome now. This is perfect. We are getting the number 1 and the number 9 in our final outcome and the even numbers as well. Here we are using static data number 8 here for the index that we should not do. So let's automate it how I can. I can say array dot length minus 1. So it will be equivalent to 8 itself. And let's have a look at the final output. So this is how we can use the filter. Apart from this index here as a parameter, there is also a third parameter in the predicate function and that is array itself. So if I just hover my cursor here, I can see the first one is the current value, second is index and the third one is the original array on which we are performing a filter. So I can say here original array. I can give any name here. Right now I'm not using ARR because it will create a conflict here, okay? And what's the use of it? Currently, in our case, there is no use of original array. This is just an elaboration I want to show you. We can also have an access to original array in our predicate function. Currently, we are using in a normal global scope all the data we are writing. But if you are writing a complicated code in which your predicate function is in another file or maybe in another project, somewhere else and then if you need access to the original array so this will help you and now you can see every time you'll get original array whenever your predicate function is getting called if you want to see that you can just console the index then i'll console the element then i'll print the original array. So I'm printing all the things, index, element, and the original array. Let's see. This is for the zero index, the first element. This is a complete array. This is for the first index, the value is two, and this is an original array. And this is how in each and every predicate function, we are getting three different inputs. So this is how we have seen how the advanced options in the predicate function help us to customize the filter behavior as per our custom logic.